and I'm here to talk to you about the roller coaster relationship between design and engineering. As a former consultant designer for 13 years in Design Partners, I've had the pleasure of working with a number of engineers, and out of every collaboration or altercation, the same outcome has arrived to your opportunity. Successfully navigating through the stages of relationships can be a long road, but the first stage in every relationship can be the best. Excitement. Those early days when everything is new and fresh and feels amazing, every, you, you're going to take over the world and everything is possible. Blown away by each other's skill sets, the in initial introduction is full of excitement and trepidation. Each party sizes each other up for comparison. Do we both work in pro your solid works? Can the other output the final types we need? Have you ever worked in this sector before? How many products do you have in, in production? We're looking for a really good fit. So learning each other, other's capabilities is an automatic level of respect between the two professions. But this respect has to be grounded in understanding how each other think. Left side thinkers are great communicators, the verbally instruct, great writers and planners. Right side thinkers like to demonstrate, visually communicate, and prefer open-ended questions. When a person is strong in both areas, you can achieve greatness. Steve Jobs, an obvious example, is, was imaginative, innovative, and a visionary. Marissa Mayer from Yahoo, an idea connector, prophetic and, and systematic. And at last but not least, Albert Einstein, the theoretical physicist, who is imaginative, intuitive, and an amazing communicator. So engineers are math based, there's probably quite a few engineers in the room, and they're looking for an absolute answer, and it just has to work. But designers on the other, other hand are arguably art based, and to question everything, looking at the bigger picture. The combination of the two perspectives achieves design thinking. Design thinking is a method of meeting people's needs and desires in ways that are technologically feasible, strategically viable and economically sustainable. It breeds innovation. And innovation is directly dependent on creativity. And this, this applies to both engineering and design. It's an essential part of the product development process to capture the consumer's attention, to set a company apart from its competitors and to find advanced solutions to users' needs. But getting back to this relationship, reality, it can hit us and it can hit us really hard. So we find out that we're only human, we have imperfections and we can make mistakes. Each other, or the design intent cannot be tooled within the bomb. The PCB is massive and the capacitor is placed where the designer wants the power button. The curve is being constructed rather than honed. And Charles and Ray Eames picture here famously saying design depends largely on constraints. And constraints can also hit hard. But that's what design and engineering can overcome. Putting some boundaries on, on the project that make the project achievable for the market or production are absolutely essential. The balance of pushing those boundaries and hitting the constraints are a del delicate combination. But constraints, like rules, are there to be broken, and that's another role that the designer should perform. Question never. So Charles and Reigns, originally an, an architect and an artist respectively, design many things from architecture to product. This example is showing a multifunctional chair whose shell can be combined with a variety of different bases. thinking pictures so I do actually need pictures. <laughs> Sorry. So um, this chair the, the shell is made from a fiber glass and plastic resin which enable their, their pieces to fit the body's base or the body's forms for optimal comfort. And human factors is an absolutely essential consideration when designing a chair and is the product comfortable to use? How long is it in use for? You can see by the images the use cases have been carefully considered. 
in its multiple forms from occasional dining to relaxing to office. It was ahead of its time, achieving both groundbreaking moulding and production techniques and a timeless design that overcame the constraints in place. Nothing is impossible. Approaching a product or service with the user in mind is key to successful product development. Understanding what is actually meaningful to, to your user in terms of their interaction or the form it should take represents the core of designing a successful experience. And then comes that point, which view should take precedent? And this is largely specific to the actual project. But in general, engineer products sell and design products sell well, said every designer in the world ever. But it's about responsibility and ownership. Someone at the end of the day needs to make a final decision, and this may, may very well not be the engineer or designer's choice. It could be a budget or a marketing decision. But in a perfect world, the two disciplines challenge each other to be better and more appealing to the consumer. An example of when you achieve engineering overload. The tap, or water guidance system, does not really need three hinges to direct, direct water into the glass. And then pure design indulgence. One of the worst products ever made, in my opinion. Difficult to use, you need to hold one of the legs as you juice so your hand gets all wet. They are also limited to the glass or the object that fits underneath. Um, making it very difficult to, to juice. And at a lovely 50 euros or so, it'll make a dent in your services and in your wallet just for a bit of lemon juice. A beautiful waste of aluminium, I think there's some materials talks later on. <laughs> so how could it get any worse? Well, they brought out 10,000 gold plated versions. The citric acid actually erodes the gold plating, so it makes it completely unusable. So the answers to our problems arrive in the Joseph Joseph Citrus Squeezer. The dual injected form is comfortable to use while protecting the hand from getting wet. The soft rubber cup underneath the reading head catches the pulp in the pips effectively and allow, it allows you to juice over any surface or vessel. And you can pop it into the dishwasher when you're done. Job done. So, prototyping. To achieve any good or great design, prototyping is absolutely essential to building knowledge in the product development process. It enables proof and reasoning of decision making. It also allows identification of possible issues in early stage development, enabling critical elimination of tooling and production costs or errors. This is when, if you fail, you fail fast, and that can be as important as success. So that comfortable stage, when you support each other, just like the red billed ox factors feeding on the Impala, mutually beneficial recognizing the differences between the two, but appreciating them. And fantastically well-designed engineered flat pack chair that can be stored and unfolded easily for use. And then the more comfortable lounge chair, allowing for a more relaxed elevated leg position. Both cer certainly lacking key ergonomic requirements, but bo both more than likely answering the respective briefs, fit for their purpose. And then what we all aim for, real love. This is when the magic starts to happen and the fruits of our labour are produced, hopefully to the highest standards, achieving perfection. And possibly the best example of the two professions delivering perfection, technically and aesthetically, is in car design. Whether using the latest laser lighting or OLED technologies, automotive lighting detailing really does sing the success of engineering glory and design might. That's what gets the emotive response in users. That's what builds trust with brands. It's what the biggest and the best brands are built on. And, I hate talking about it, <laughs> but probably the biggest brand that drives a designer and engineer relationship is Apple. The Apple MacBook. It's certainly room for performance enhancement, but if you can stomach its flaws, it's such a beautifully designed machine that it probably doesn't really matter. It's divisive, everyone has something to say on it, and it's portable. It's, it has an amazing screen, it's thin, it measures just 35 millimeters on its thinnest point and 131 at its thickest. It's, this is due to the, the Intel um, fanless core that's passively cooled, which actually is, is amazing in itself, but you forget what's inside quickly. Why? Because of the sleek, subtle, surf, sculpted surfacing making the hardest of hearts get emotional, achieving unobtainium. In order to make the MacBook the device that it was, 
or is Apple had to go right back to the drawing board, redesigning mechanisms and components with intense precision to make sure every piece of the puzzle fit perfectly. And that there is absolutely no wasted space. The result is both a feat of engineering and an object of stunning beauty. But they had a long road to travel to get that beauty. This is the Apple Macintosh portable. It was portable, but it was no lightweight. And it's 16 pounds and four inches thick. Apple's first laptop was the first consumer laptop to, to go into space. It was released in 1989. It cost a whopping six and a half thousand dollars when it first released, and in today's money, that's about eleven and a half thousand dollars. So, a key aspect to innovation is the challenge of merging the values of practical utility and aesthetic appeal. Aesthetics is the human perception of beauty, balancing all the senses. But this is not just about visual appeal; it's about creating an emotional response that triggers desire to own the product. Design pays off. Companies that adopt a comprehensive approach to design make more money and generate more exports than companies that do not use design. And I didn't say that. <laughs> so where can you go to get support in your design focused project? And that can really be any project. Introducing one of the newest Enterprise Ireland funded technology gateways, Design Plus, where companies can leverage the expertise for development of industry. Working on tangible solutions on an industry-based schedule, we deliver real results that make an impact. We combine creative and analytical approaches across different technologies and research disciplines to address industry need. Acting as an advocate for the user, Design Plus seeks to connect consumers with technology for the benefit of industry. So how can you work with us? From large-scale innovation partnerships that can be funded up to 80%, to innovation vouchers that, that are worth 5k each and each company are eligible for two innovation vouchers and one co-funded voucher up to the value of 10k and the call is actually open now and it's closing on the 3rd of February so if anybody wants to talk to me about using any of the funded opportunities let me know and of course you can work with us directly so let's start stage one together get in touch to see how we can support you thank you